Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today we're going to be having a look at a couple of cameras from Mamiya's press system namely the Mamiya uh, Universal and the Mamiya Super 23. If you're interested in purchasing one of these cameras or another vintage Japanese camera I sell these in my eBay and Etsy stores. Uh, please check the links in the description below the video uh, if you want to see what cameras I have uh, currently available. So getting back to uh, the Mamiya press cameras here, uh, when you take a look at one of these cameras and look at uh, its size and its heft, you kind of wonder uh, how it's possible that uh, press photographers would be interested in a camera like this. Until you realize that for about half a century around the world, the standard uh, camera for press photographers was a 4x5 large format camera. Uh, namely, uh, cameras like the Graflex uh, Speed Graphic or Crown Graphic, uh, the Linhof press cameras or Bush Pressman, all these were 4x5 large format cameras which used sheet film. But uh, toward the 1950s, as 35mm film became more widely available, uh, newspaper photographers began to move away from the, the bulky 4x5 cameras and really were able to do much better with the, the smaller 35 millimeter cameras. These were perfectly suited for newspapers and things like that. But uh, for magazines it was a different matter. Uh, magazines preferred larger formats uh, because they gave more detail and resolution to their covers and full page photos inside the magazine. So cameras like the <clears throat> Universal and Super 23 were quite popular uh, with magazines and to this day I still see these being used by uh, magazine photographers. Now for those of you who've never been to Japan, uh, paper has not made the, has, has not been dying here like it has been dying in other places. Uh, here Japanese people still read a lot of newspapers and if you go into any bookstore you'll find it jam-packed full of magazines for everything. You know, uh, it, they have magazines dedicated to the feeding and care of hamsters and things like that. It, it's, it's quite amazing. So uh, even today some magazines are still using these cameras and a lot of these cameras which I obtain, uh, fix up and resell I get from uh, magazine photographers and publishers. So. Uh, the Mamiya uh, press series uh, was introduced in the 1950s. Uh, the original press was functionally identical to this camera, though the appearance was different. Uh, the early ones featured a, uh, a different lens mounting system, which uh, adapted into the bayonet system, which you see uh, on these two cameras. Uh, the bayonet system is quite simple to use. It has a locking ring. To remove the lens, you turn it leftwards and just pull off the lens. To remount the lens, you put it back inside, you line up the red dot on the top of the lens with the red dot on the collar, uh, turn clockwise, and the lens is fixed. Mamiya introduced a number of lenses for the press cameras. Uh, the widest was a 50mm uh, f6.3, and then uh, the next widest was, uh, uh, this is an example, the 75mm f5.6. Uh, the most popular lens was the 100mm f3.5, and that's the one lens that you'll usually find on these cameras. The ne next most popular lens is like the one which is fitted to the Super 23 here, and it's the 127mm f4.7. This was Mamiya's most popular portrait lens, and it tends to give the best uh, perspective when uh, taking a photo of someone's face. Uh, a very popular combination you will see is a Mamiya Universal camera with a 127mm lens, uh, a Polaroid instant film back like this, and a four-way image splitter on the front. Uh, the Mamiya Universal was very popular in motor driver's license bureaus and uh, companies which made ID cards. Uh, they, they just took the photos with these and used the instant film to create the photos for their company IDs or driver's licenses or whatever. Uh, beyond the 127mm lens was a 150mm telephoto lens, and then finally the 250mm super telephoto, which weighs about as much as an entire press camera uh, by itself. Uh, besides the lens, is uh, and there were a wide uh, assortment of lenses, you know, pretty much for every use. Uh, another interesting thing about the uh, press series is, are the film backs. 
The early cameras came with a multi-format back, which we call the K-back. And it featured adapters, which allowed you to shoot it uh, 6x6, 6x7, or 6x9 formats. And with the film back and inserts, you also uh, received a viewfinder mask with inserts, which covered the uh, viewfinder window to give you an idea of what, uh, what you were going to get on the uh, film. Uh, the K-backs are quite interesting and they're very useful if you like shooting in different formats, but it's kind of hard to find the K-back with its inserts and the mask with its inserts. Uh, it, it's like you know, finding a, a kid's puzzle which has all the pieces with it. It's really hard to do uh, after the kids played with it a few times. Uh, most of the backs which were later produced are the regular uh, 6x7 and 6x9 roll film backs. Uh, these are available, and they came on both the Universal and the Super 23. A later model back was the Type 3 back, which was a cable release back. In order to make the press cameras a little bit more compact and easier to handle, uh, Nami designed a roll film back, which had a shutter button on the top and a port for a cable release. And the cable ran from the bottom of the film back uh, to the lens. And this allowed photographers to do away with the handle, uh, which was quite a convenient feature. As the, the handle, though, it makes the camera easy to handle. It, it makes it a little bit uh, bigger and bulkier than it might be and harder to put inside the bag. As you can see, uh, most of the cameras come with uh, a catch where you can stash the cable when it's not in use. You don't want to leave the cable threaded into the lens when you're not using it because it's possible for uh, when you set the camera down to bend or kink the cable which can cause the cable not to work and it can also bend uh, the threaded mount that you attach the cable to. So it, it's quite an interesting uh, system. Uh, just as I said, uh, it, yeah, never leave the cable attached when you're not using the camera. Another interesting feature which the Super 23 is, has, which is uh, kind of unique to medium format photography, is a movable rear standard. You can pull out one side or the other and this gives you a swing function uh, to the camera, which allows you to adjust for a perspective. For example, you're shooting a, a picture of a fence or something like that and you have too much of an angle on it. By swinging the rear element a little bit, you can change the perspective and make it look more uh, uh, level. And the same thing goes with, uh, I say, swings. You can move the uh, rear standard uh, back or forward on the top or bottom, and this allows you to adjust for a pers you know, vertical perspective, which is a really interesting feature. Now, to take advantage of uh, the tilt and swing feature, you have to be able to see what you're looking at uh, and see what the camera's actually seeing. And Mamiya thought of this uh, quite well by developing a, or producing a large number of focusing adapters. The most common is something like this, which is uh, actually a sheet film holder. And this attaches on the back just like you would uh, uh, a normal film back. And you push the catch and it pops open. And inside you can see a focusing screen. So if you're going to use the uh, tilt and swing uh, feature on the Mamiya Super 23, you really need uh, one of these um, focusing uh, screens or uh, sheet film adapters. Uh, other adapters were available. Uh, the best one is this uh, focusing prism, which is pretty much the uh, sheet film uh, film back, but which, which has this uh, prism attached to it. And uh, when it's fitted and you have the camera mounted, you can simply you know, look down through the top to see what your, uh, what your subject looks like. And also an interesting thing is if you're shooting in, say, uh, portrait mode, you can switch it to the side. Or if you have it mounted high on a tripod, you can even you know, put it uh, upside down. So it's a really uh, flexible and interesting accessory. But these are a little bit hard to find. And a lot of the ones I see are broken or damaged or whatever. And the backs are quite easy and quick to interchange and mount. 
Universal does not have the feature the rear tilts and swings that the Super 23 does, but the Universal is different in that it allows you to use a Polaroid instant film back, like the one which is fitted to this camera. Now these backs were designed to use the uh, Polaroid pack film, which uh, uh, was quite popular in years past. And then uh, it can also use the Fuji instant pack film, like FP100 uh, BC or FP3000B. Uh, Fuji stopped producing the instant uh, pack film in 2017, but uh, fresh film is still quite easy to find uh, on eBay and from other sources. And for myself, I've had really good luck using film which is uh, 10 years or less expired. And I've used film which is more expired, like back to 2001 or so, as long as it's been carefully stored. If it hasn't been put in the trunk of a car or something like that, if it's been kept indoors or refrigerated, it, it lasts almost indefinitely. Uh, the instant film is quite easy to use and load. Uh, just pop open the catch and open the door, set the film inside, and close it. And it's pretty much easy, you know, easy to go. And the operation of the camera is quite simple. Uh, when shooting the camera, the first thing you do is uh, uh, you focus and compose. Or if you don't remove the film back, so you remove the dark slide, uh, charge the shutter, and with the cable attached, you can simply pull the trigger and the shutter fires. Uh, there's also a lever on the side which allows you to uh, fire the shutter. And some of these have... Uh, uh, a lock on the side which allows you to uh, lock open the lens while you're using one of the focusing aids or ground glass or uh, sheet film holders. Uh, the quality of these cameras is quite good. Uh, everything is very solidly built. Uh, these cameras are designed for uh, professional use which means they are designed to be abused. Uh, they're quite resistant to dropping. Uh, you'll, you'll often find these with dents or things or whatever, but uh, the mechanisms inside are built a little bit with a little bit, you know, a, a fair amount of clearance between the cover and the actual mechanism. So even with a big dent or something like that, it's usually not going to touch or cause any harm on the inside. Adjustments to these cameras are, uh, for example, to the rangefinder are a little bit difficult. To adjust the rangefinder, you really have to take the top cover off. Uh, on the Super 23, the rangefinder adjustment is is a little bit easier. Uh, you have to remove the uh, this button here, which selects the frame lines. Take it off, and there are three screws on the left, center back, and right. And you lift off the cover, and you'll see the uh, horizontal adjustment is located on the mirror on the left side and the vertical adjustment is located on the screw uh, just behind uh, where this one is. As well, a matter of fact, this one is actually a little bit more convenient because on some of the Super 23's they have, uh, this one actually has caps which allow you to access uh, the adjustment screws. However, uh, the Universal does not have any such access so you have to remove the top cover in order to uh, make rangefinder adjustments on the Universal. And some universals are different. Uh, some will have screws on the front. You must remove these two screws, lift off the faceplate, and then there's a third screw hidden underneath. And all these screws must be removed to lift off the cover and adjust the rangefinder. Uh, the rangefinder in these is quite bright and clear, and it has uh, you can adjust the uh, uh, frame lines for a 100 millimeter, uh, 150, and 250 millimeters. If you're using other lenses, like the 50 or 75 millimeter lens, you have to use one of these accessory viewfinders. You still have to focus using the normal uh, range finder system, but then you uh, compose by looking through the finder. And you adjust uh, for parallax by using this knob on the back. Now this is a dedicated 75 millimeter finder for this lens, but Mamiya produced some finders which were flexible. They would work for the 75 millimeter and the 100 and 127 millimeter lenses. They just have different frame lines inside the finder for the different lenses. Another interesting feature about uh, the Mamiya press cameras is the flexibility in using the film. 
for uh, an interesting thing. This one is set to 120, but you can, let's see, I don't do this often, so I might be fudged up a little bit, but uh, you can, yeah, I'm not doing such a good job of this. You can, ah, there it goes. Not normally so clumsy when I do something like that, but you can flip over uh, the pressure plate and switch to 220 film. You don't need to get a special back to when you switch from like 120 to 220. You just adapt the back over. Oh, I put it on easier than I took it off. Okay. And that's all there is to it. Uh, as for... Image quality. Uh, Namiya's lenses are really first rate. Uh, I, I love the, the photos I get from uh, the press series. My favorite lens, uh, I have two favorite lenses. I like the 75mm 5.6 for uh, wide angle landscape or interior shooting. And I also like the, the 127mm lens. So uh, I have kids and it's very wonderful to be able to take pictures of their faces. I like how everything looks. And uh, I find that the instant film shooting to be a lot of fun with these. Uh, though Fuji doesn't make the film anymore, it's still easy to find and it's still phenomenal film. It takes amazing photos. And I have a lot of fun with the FP3000 film. It's, it's quite interesting to be able to shoot uh, 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 you know, the large apertures. Uh, for example, the 100 uh, f2.8 Mamiya lens, which is a little bit hard to find and a little bit expensive, but which is you know, really, really good. And yeah, it, it's really good. Uh, in Japan, a lot of street photographers prefer these cameras, you know, despite how heavy they are. And when walking around uh, Ginza or Shinjuku or places like that, uh, uh, these aren't that hard to find. You'll, you'll see a lot of people using them. You know, they really like the, the performance and, and the modularity and I guess the madness of shooting a, a camera. <laughs> Uh, you know, doing street photography with a medium format camera. I've tried it with a, with a Graflex and you know, it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, people look at you kind of funny when you're pointing something like uh, you know, a super graphic at them, but uh, yeah, uh, it's all good. Anyway, uh, that's it for my uh, overview here of the uh, Mamiya Press cameras. Uh, as I said, I, I sell these if you're interested in, in buying one. Uh, yeah, please check out what I have for sale. Uh, if you have any questions about them, uh, feel free to ask. And if you like this video, uh, please let me know. Uh, thanks a lot.